All right, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Ayurveda student uh, panel webinar. We're excited to have students from our first year and second year of the Ayurveda Wellness Educator in the first year program, and also in the second year of the program, which is the, the uh, practitioner portion of it. We also have Dr. Anu with us, who is a program director for our Ayurveda programs. And this is something that we've wanted to do, and it's the first one we're doing for any of our programs, where we actually bring the current students uh, here for question and answer. And so as we go throughout the webinar today, you can go ahead and add your questions. Just type those in the comments. And if we're not able to get to your questions here in this actual webinar, we'll follow up with you directly with an email. And if you're watching this on YouTube later on, you can just go ahead and email any questions you have to admissions at seuhs.edu, and we'll be happy to answer those as well. So my name is Luke Phillips. I'm Assistant Vice President for the School of Professional Studies here at SCU, and I'll be helping to ask some of the questions today, and I'm going to ask all of our panelists to introduce themselves. I'm Amberly Patsik. I am a second year Ayurvedic student I'm doing the practitioner program. Hi everyone, my name is Myra and I am a first term student and I am studying the wellness educator program. My name is Janine, I have done the first year and I'm going to do my second year for the practitioner program. My name is Nellie and I'm in the first year Ayurvedic wellness certi certificate program. I'm Dr. Anu, program director for Ayurvedic medicine. And also Dr. Nu is an internationally recognized expert in Ayurveda and very credentialed. So make sure to, if you want to learn more about that, we have all kinds of good stuff about her on our website. A lot of articles she's published and other things. So we're thankful to you, uh, Dr. Nu, for doing this and for joining us. Uh, so the purpose of this webinar, as I started to mention a little bit earlier, is that we often kind of explain what Ayurveda is and we also talk about our program. We have a lot of stuff on our website if people are interested to learn. We even have a career guide, a free ebook download you can download at seuhs.edu slash Ayurveda. But of all the resources we have, one of the most valuable resources we have is our students. And the thinking is that often we'll be on a tour with students and one of our admissions advisors will communicate their understanding of a program. But if we have a student of that program explaining it, it's a much different story. So that's part of the reason why we wanted to do this webinar and have actual students just answer some questions. If you are just now joining, or um, if you wanted to forward this along to someone else to view, just note that we'll have this posted up at youtube.com slash uh, within the next coming week. All right, so with that said, I'm just gonna jump right into some questions. And we're going to sort of frame it at first in terms of the curriculum and the, the learning in the program and, and some of the experience of the learning, but then talk a little bit about at SCU what it's like to be a student outside the classroom and all the other things that we have. So the first thing is, you know, you guys have learned a lot in your program so far, whether you've just finished the first year uh, or if you just finished the second year. And of all the learnings you've had, is there anything that really sticks out to you or something you've really enjoyed learning so far? I think everything about the program is very precious. Um, I like, the one thing that I like about the program is, um, I guess I wanna say the basic principles because that's, sets the foundation for everything else that you're you're going to be learning um, all the knowledge of ayurveda is so expansive but the basic principles kind of um, sets everything and kind of like builds a path for you to be able to learn everything else at a, at an easier pace but overall i it's really hard for me to choose which one is what part of the program is my favorite because the whole program is amazing. Definitely, I can, I can piggyback on that, that I feel completely the same. It's hard to choose just one thing. We have been brought so many different types of changes through this program that it's hard to be, to pick one that is special, mm -hmm. to say the whole program is special. Um, but I think that one of the best things, and I think that you guys can kind of relate, was like the relationships that we kind of got out of it and like the connections that we had um, and just like the overall overall support that we have learning this knowledge and getting so much experience from 
with our practitioners and our teachers, I think that was like one of the coolest things that you can't really find at other programs that I really enjoyed. I think also for me, it's the, having that clinical experience with the patient and getting to talk to them and get to know them and also applying everything that we learn in the program as well is very beneficial to understand like what Ayurveda, like the concepts and all that. Yeah, that's great. One of the ways that helps me in framing it, and Dr. News heard me say this many times and, uh, and, and even mentioned it on the last webinar we did, um, but one of the ways it's easy for me to think about the learning is you kind of have uh, the importance of uh, the mind, the spirit, and the body. And when you are healthy uh, mentally, and when you're healthy in your, in your spirit and in your, um, the, the way life is going and in your lifestyle, you end up being healthier physically and, um, and vice versa. And so this program, there seems to be different elements of all those things working with each other. So when you think about the the uh, spirit and the mind, there are things like meditation and yoga that you guys have, have been in class doing. Uh, and then when it comes to the, to the um, things that you take into your body through nutrition, the things that are in your body that you get out through detoxification and those kinds of methods. Um, and then you have external to the physical body, a lot of techniques you learn like body work and, and some of those. So of all those things I said, are there any that, that, you, that you've enjoyed or, or more than one? I, I think, I'm sorry. Um, I think that one of the things is that it teaches you life skills, like kind of like how you were saying that there's so many things that we didn't realize, like sleep was so important, you know, that kind of makes us more healthy and it helps us be better people in general outside of the program alone, you know, learning all those basic principles that you were talking about. And what's nice about the basic things of sleeping or eating the right things, there's with Ayurveda, there's like a name to it and a science behind it and a reasoning for it. And it all goes back to being in tune with nature. So it's kind of like such a simple idea, but they allow it's elaborated and you're just like, whoa, definitely, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, sometimes people call it like the science of the past. They'll say, oh, this is a 5,000 year old kind of uh, medicine. But really at SCU, when we talk about the bringing together of all those things, we talk about this integrative health and, and the connection of mind and spirit and body as really the healthcare system of tomorrow. And that's something that's really become prominent in today's healthcare delivery system. Is that something that, that drew you guys to the program at all or something that you found of value so far? Definitely. Um, I feel like it's important for um, wellness practitioners to have that genuine care and love for their patients. And I think that makes a difference in a person's healing. And I think um, with the current healthcare, people are getting sick of just being thrown a prescription and not really taking the time with the patient. And there's so much involved, we're a very complex being. So to include the mind and the body and the spirit, like it all pertains to a person's health. So we acknowledge that and we create something to create overall healing. So, mm -hmm. so one thing to add, I always ask these questions to the student. <clears throat> How did they feel at the end of the program? from the day first when they started and the day like before the graduation. And majority of them say that it has influenced their life. Like they are changed now their lifestyle. They're very careful now what they eat, what time they go to sleep, how they communicate with the people around them and overall quality of life is improved. Some of the students just cried. I mean, like mm -hmm. had the last class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the amount of changes it brought into their life. And I have taught, I taught into the acupuncture program and also some classes for the chiropractic program. I see the difference here. The students start to implement these principles into their lifestyle. And when they go through that two year journey and they really see that reflection, the changes mm -hmm. happening in their life. And so actually as a student, you find that your own life is kind of transformed in yes. terms of being healthier and being happier as, a, as a, an individual but also what you're, I think is the most inspiring thing about the program is you're actually preparing to help other people to make a difference in their lives, to, um, to heal, um, to transform their lives and to be a leader in a really, um, a field that's really prominent right now. Mm -hmm. Have you guys had the, that kind of thought or feeling? Yes, um, I've definitely had that feeling. Um, <clears throat> looking at myself back to the first day, I have changed tremendously and 
It's true. It, Ayurveda helps you to get to know yourself better. Um, it kind of pushes you to the lim- to your own limits, but in a good way. Um, I think it helps you grow and it helps you become the person that you feel like you've always wanted to be. Um, I think going through that journey, like not alone too, with students who are on that same path because we have grown up in our own habits and ways, but Ayurveda kind of brings a shock to you. Like you are more aware of your body and what's good for it. And so being with a nice environment, like I've been to college courses where I don't speak to the people next to me and being able to like have relationships with all the students and um, has been really emotionally helpful and has helped the program even better, I think, for all of us. Yeah, in a way you kind of become like a family. Um, You kind of get to have a second family where you get to share your experience with your classmates. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of crying, but (laughs) you cry. It's all together, though. There's all good crying. (laughs) Uh, There's a lot of sadness. We talk about healthier and happier lives. There's a lot of happy, happy tears. But it's part of it. I feel like it's a second family. Yeah, I think I'm going to kind of like sum up your question. I think that after we implement it in ourselves, we are like a magnet to other people. I like the the second someone finds out that I'm doing an Ayurvedic practitioner program, they're like, what is that? What does that do? What kind of thing can you help me with? So it's also Mm -hmm. like, yes, it is for yourself the first time you do make it about yourself, but people want this. It's very apparent and they're very interested and they want to learn. So it's something beneficial to have in general. Mm -hmm. I want to follow up on something you said, Janine, um, in addition to the answers you guys have already given, which have been so great, uh, but that idea of community and family. So some who might be watching or listening may not realize So we're not a single purpose institution. We are an institution uh, that's been regionally accredited for over 20 years. And this program is developed based on the accreditation standards of the regional accreditation, even though there actually isn't an accrediting body for Ayurveda. Um, But one of the good things about being not just a single purpose institution is that you have the opportunity to to meet and um, not so much be in class with in this program, uh, but you're you're sitting and and studying alongside and getting to know potentially chiropractors, future acupuncturists. We have PA uh, students here. We have massage students as well. Have you been able to meet some students from other professions in addition to the one you're in? Um, I think the overall feel on on this campus is like it's a bunch, it's a group of people, acupuncture, uh, chiropractors, Ayurveda, they were all on the same page and mindset as far as wanting to be a force in um, alternative medicine and integrative medicine. So I feel like just having the whole, like it's a whole house and all these same like-minded people, it kind of, there's an intimacy at this school that you don't feel at other ones where everyone's on their own you feel like part of the, you feel more of a community here and at other schools you feel kind of like a herd. Like there's just so many different people, but I think um, everyone here is very close and from the campus uh, activities and things we've had here, everyone is like-minded and- mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah, so we're, we're talking a little bit about the uh, student experience. What I think we'll do, I'm going to shift again. We're going to we're gonna tie up the sort of curriculum piece a little bit. Then we're going to come back to some of the topics about what it's like to be a student here at SEU outside the curriculum. Uh, so one of the things I hear sometimes is, and uh, we run like Facebook ads and other things, and people comment and they say, what is this Ayurveda thing? It's not really evidence-based. It's not based on science. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, we pride ourselves on the fact that it definitely is science and evidence-based uh, in many ways. And you're taking classes like anatomy and physiology and things that it's not this abstract sort of program. It's actually really concrete. And there are specific uh, courses you take. And so could you talk about the evidence and science base? Maybe Dr. New, you could talk about it as well, along with the students. Uh, and the kinds of courses that are taken and the reason why they're part of the curriculum. Um, it's an empire, empiricism based science. So it's based off of our, what we see has a good result. We are going to then give to patients. You know, we see these herbs are helping this patient in this way. We're going to continue that. That's what the science is based off of. Um, and I think that there's so much history that goes into it and so many years of people that are validating this over and over again 
um, that it's accurate. It, to say that it's a spiritual, there is a component of spirituality in it, but it is not based solely on that spirituality. It's based off of what we experience at the vet clinic, um, what we experience in, individually in their own practices, the doctor's practices, um, and then say, oh, this is what I found to be the best result. So there is some sort of statistic that we can get out of it. And also just looking back at how old Ayurveda is, it's lasted so many years and I feel like it's for a reason. It's because it definitely works. Um, and I feel like it is um, scientifically tested and it has been for centuries. I just feel like it's just barely becoming recognized and it's something almost foreign to most people and country. that's why they don't really understand its validity but ayurveda influences so many other um, alternative um, medicine modalities such as um, chinese mm -hmm. traditional mm -hmm. chinese medicine definitely and holistic it's, medicine it's um, yeah and even um, acupuncture and um, so many other healing modalities. Mm -hmm. Were you going to mention anything on the evidence-based yeah. piece? So the fact that it is existing since 5,000 years, the fact that it is practiced since 5,000 years mm -hmm. shows that it is evidence-based. There right. is something mm -hmm. behind it, otherwise it won't exist for that long time, mm -hmm. length of time. But it's not only existing from throughout the classical textbook or practicing, but there are also evidence-based research is happening mm -hmm. in this field. A lot of studies happening in India, even in US and other foreign countries as well. But the amount of studies conducted in this field may be less compared to other alternative medicine, but still we can say there is a tremendous amount of growth in the field of research it is happening. So for example, the specific herbs and its effectiveness, there are research happening. And also the specific therapies and its effect. There are research studies happening. So overall, it is also an evidence-based science from the practice perspective, also from the education perspective. We mm -hmm. can say that definitely. That's a, that's a really what, great way to describe it too. Like if you broke down the curriculum into pieces and, and looked at the evidence for each one, mm -hmm. there's lots of evidence um, out there. For example, when we talked about the connection of your, your, um, your spiritual and mental state versus physical. Like um, there are studies around uh, if you're less stressed, um, you're going to be healthier physically and that kind of thing. And so those mindfulness things, yoga, meditation, and that kind of thing really contribute to that. If you look at nutrition, we talked about the things you bring into your body, countless studies on nutrition, how important that is. So you learn something that's very much based in evidence in terms of the nutrition that comes in and the herbal medicine. Also the detoxification are all very much proven and evidence-based. You look at this program and think about you learn you're taking a and p anatomy and physiology uh, in the program and that's something that you know a lot of a uh, lot of different professions actually don't include that in the curriculum so you're learning about the body from a scientific um, approach um, and then of course the therapies the massage the body work there's lots of evidence we for make that well. sure that ACU students get that foundation knowledge about the anatomy and physiology. They are not just learning Ayurvedic anatomy and Ayurvedic physiology. They also will be going through that coursework required for to understand <clears throat> what are the organs in the body, what are the physiology functions of these organs before even get more thorough understanding of it from Ayurvedic perspective. Mm -hmm. right? And they really do push us to be on par with Western medicines. So they want us to know like what, yeah, the, our entire body and anatomy so that it's actually a little more difficult because we have to learn Sanskrit and like all these different variations. But also with the research, a lot of things that are coming up is um, gut bacteria. And that's a very, that's the main thing that we talk in Ayurveda. One of the main things, I mean, there's so much, but with our gut and how it does affect our emotional mental state. And so there's so much research that sure, it's not saying it's Ayurvedic, but it is Ayurvedic in so many ways. And there's people talking about um, fasting and um, all sorts of things that when I hear it, I'm like, that's Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. There's no name, but it's going <laughs> to sooner or later. Yeah. Just to add that evidence based also, we included a class for under hours class for the second year student, practitioner students to understand uh, evidence based practice where the students will learn 
how to retrieve a scientific journal article or how to get that information and take into the practice. Mm -hmm. So they will go through the literature search, how to conduct the literature search, how to retrieve the article from that search, etc. So that they get that evidence-based information as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Now, uh, in addition to some of those things, so that's some of the boring stuff, all this evidence-based, you know, <laughs> but there's some really fun uh, things when you think about Ayurveda. So you get into like, especially the, the body work and stuff, you're talking about leaves, you got oil dripping, you got rice bags, there's all kinds of really cool things. If, you do a, if a, a listener did a Google search of, of Ayurveda therapies, you'd see all kinds of images and wonder what they are. So maybe we can talk about some of that stuff that's kind of fun to think about. So. What, is, what have you learned in the program so far about these? Like when we're seeing oil drip or we're seeing, uh, I don't even know what they are, leaves and rice bags. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, well, I think one of the coolest things mm -hmm. that we experienced was a net for Boston. Can we oh, say that? absolutely. Like that was a really That's awesome, mm -hmm. awesome treatment to see because we did it in our clinic as well. Um, but just to see how that works and to see that you're putting oil ghee directly in the eye for these treatments to heal them for people who have diseases of the eye. And it's just an, an amazing to actually have someone in the clinic to do that and see the change this person has with that. I think that by far was one of the coolest things. And tell us more about that one. So what happens when someone comes in and you would determine this is what they need? What then would you do? So I, I don't remember fully. The patient came in for a degenerative eye disease. Is that a degeneration? Yeah. And um, so when she was saying that she was losing sight in her left eye, I think, and um, it was completely, it was almost completely, she couldn't see anymore out of it. And this was her last um, hope for, for this. And um, we did the Netrobosity, and I think after three or four treatments, she started to gain eyesight again in that eye. And now it's like almost normal, right? Yeah, normal. Mm -hmm. And she also had a swelling inside the eye and mm -hmm. bleeding. Right. It and so. Stopped. And now that's all stopped and now she can see and she's so grateful for it and she feels so blessed like it's it becomes like a a spiritual moment you know when you can when you were losing eyesight and then you can see again it has to be you know a crazy change but um things i've seen and what what kind of what would that therapy look like like what would you be doing so you put the dough ring um around the eye um and then you would do you'd have their eye closed and then you drip the oil onto it and they open their eye and they move it triple a um and they move it around to get the oil lubricate that eye and then you do it a couple of times and then um take out the oil and then you know that's pretty much all the treatment is but cool yeah, yeah that's amazing good story and good to hear yeah and that's needs. one of so, so many, many yeah. so many people like yeah. i've seen people leave like so thankful and crying because they you know they're not in pain anymore or they could sleep again and yeah. it's just insane what like hot oil and mm -hmm. these things could do. And it's the intention that we put into it too. It's like being really aware. Mm -hmm. So it's all of it, but the treatments so, are. So speaking of the oil and the dough ring, you know, that I see that used, you've seen it on the forehead and in other places. How does that kind of work? What's the what's the purpose of the, the dough ring and oil? What do you, that's that a loaded do? question. <laughs> there's a lot of different things. Pardon my ignorance. No, know. no, no, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, I mean, it involves, I think maybe to sum it up, I think it'd be better. So, we have a lot of treatment where we use oil. Mm -hmm. And as I said in my previous webinar, also I rather play a major role in pain management. So most commonly uh, done treatment like here at the health center, we do the Janubas, the neck treatment, back treatment, knee treatment, etc. So what we do is we create a dough ring, which we're mainly from Uradha or black gum powder and make a dough. And then we allow this medicated oil stay inside that ring and then we heat it, take it out and heat it. Take about 45 minutes to complete the treatment. And then we apply the oil around that area and work on it. And then if needed, we heat the steam. So basically it mainly helps for the degeneration of the joint, pain, swelling sometimes. So osteoarthritis, mm -hmm. commonly treated by using those therapy. So that is that bustic kind of various type of bustic treatment. And we also do the shirodara, that is the oil dripping treatment that's most commonly seen also in the pictures where oil mm -hmm. falls on the forehead. That is an indicator for insomnia, stress, anxiety, and also menopause syndrome. And there are a lot of research studies published on that topic as well. 
how it is helpful. And now Dr. Prasad completed a research in that ACU. We finished a research study on that mm -hmm. particular topic. Mm -hmm. So in general, there are various treatment for management of the disease as well as health promotion. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do it at the health center. Right. <clears throat> yeah, that's an important, I'm glad you say that because that's one of the things that we value at SU in all of our programs from the physician assistant to the chiropractor, acupuncturist, and uh, Chinese medicine and herbal medicine, Ayurveda. It's, it's not so much a patch and repair once you are sick, but it's a, um, a lifestyle medicine and creating uh, health and preventative medicine as well. So glad you mentioned that. Um, are there any other treatments that you want to talk about that you have found that have been really cool before we move on? With the Shiradara, um, I was doing the Shiradara on a patient. <laughs> And Shiradara does help with insomnia and sleeping. And before you know it, she, she, she just starts snoring. And it was kind of nice to put someone to sleep, but she was very thankful. And I've seen some patients come out and like, I know like want to tip us for helping them so much. Like they didn't know how to express their gratitude. So they wanted to go, we didn't accept it. But <laughs> they were just in tears. Yeah, like I've mentioned, but um, I think just seeing that patients are able to come off pain medications and go to something like hot oil, something natural, um, has been, it's almost it's miraculous, really. Mm -hmm. I actually feel these students get a chance to see the patient, like new patient, as well as in the follow-up visit. And I believe that's really helping you guys, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. To understand how that patient, the follow-up visit, and then how they are coming out of some of the restaurant, maybe, or how their overall life is getting better. Mm -hmm or whatever the complaint they came for is get So the students get a chance to see this like step by step. What we recommend during the initial visit, how we communicate with the patient during initial visit and how we'll be communicating with follow up visit, how we are making modification of these herbs and lifestyle recommendation. I believe that add more value to their education as Absolutely. well. Mm -hmm. By the time they finish the practitioner program, I believe you guys get almost 360 plus hours with the patient interaction. Mm -hmm. right? So I think that's very great. Mm -hmm. And it helps with our um, practices outside of this, yeah. you know, practical implication with other patients that we decide to take on because we've seen in the clinic all these different types of treatments and all these different types of patients. It gives us a more well-rounded view of how to treat, you know, afterwards. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we're talking about now, we're kind of talking about the clinic a little bit. Tell us about that. So you're, you, you've had a lot of clinical experience in the program. So at what point in the program does clinical experience begin? And what's it been like for you as you, as students have been able to actually be in the clinic? So I've heard some stories already, but anything that you'd add on the clinical experience? When it starts, I mean, for the first program, it's different. Um, yeah, for the first program, um, I think it's like four months into the program where you get to work in the clinic. Um, the thing that helps to prepare you to work in the clinic is um, taking the Panchakarma, the, which is the five um, purificatory actions that are performed on the body for, to promote healing. Um, we actually get to practice on each other and um, we do the Bastis, um, which are the oil treatments, and we also do facials. And like Dr. Andrew mentioned, we also get to practice the Shirodara, and we also do the Abhyanga, which is a full body massage. Um, so once you go into the clinic and you start implementing the knowledge that you've learned at, um, at a practical level, it does help you in gaining confidence in, in yourself and it also, um, it kind of ins inspires um, gratitude to the patient too, because they're coming to you um, seeking your help. And for me, that has been an incredible experience because like you mentioned before, like all of you mentioned, is just seeing how Ayurveda works on each patient. And when you see them come back, you just see them getting better and better. And I think, um, I think that that experience is what kind of touched me the most and it made me want to become a better practitioner and just keep keep wanting to learn and learn so I can give the best the, the best care. Any other thoughts on the clinical experiences? I think also being in that 
I talked about being on that same house, but being able to have chiropractors and um, acupuncture there, you could see the different treatments and I've been able like to ask questions and they're able, so you're not only gaining Ayurvedic knowledge, but also getting that into it. Um, like in the pharmacy, there's usually um, a doctor from a different program there. So you could ask him questions and learn about other things. So you could tie them all in, which is great. Cool. Mm -hmm. We make sure, like for example, first year, the students get into the clinic in the fourth month. So before that, we finish the class like where the students will learn how to take the history, how to talk to the patient, uh, full history taking. They complete that in the class, in pathology class, and they know how to interact with the patient. So we finish that, and then we will take them to the clinic. And there, they will have a hands-on session like each students are required to take that initial history, like patient intake form. They have to talk to the patient and complete that form before they graduate multiple times, they complete right. that exercise. Right. So, and also in the class, they will be learning the bunch of karma body work therapy. And then by the time the second part of the clinic that start from January to April, they finish almost all the pathology part and then herbology part and bunch of karma part and they can use this knowledge into the second part of the clinic. Mm -hmm. So in the first year, we divide the clinic education into two sections. Mainly the first part is observation and we are mainly focusing on each case history taking and how to talk to the patient that counseling or educational aspect. Mm -hmm. And second, by the time the second component, more about the herbs and the body work therapies, et cetera, into that. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners, in case you haven't picked up on it so far, um, when we say first year and second year, what we're talking about is our, the program we have here at SEU, the first year is the wellness educator program for one, one year. Once you finish that, then you have the option to, to, to be completed with what you're doing there with that certificate that you've already earned or go on to the second year, which is the practitioner program. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about those. Uh, another clarification kind of we were talking about the clinical experience so the clinical experience is in our on-campus SU health center which is part of the SU health system so there are a number of things that are offered in that health center and it's an integrative uh, center so we pride ourselves at SU on interprofessional education and also integrative health so what we're talking about now is that integrative health piece we are actually in the clinic and you're you're working and learning side by side with other professions mm -hmm. acupuncturists and, act, and um, uh, chiropractors, massage therapists. So that's another piece that we're talking about when we talk about that. Yeah, that we are going to implement another piece is that these students, when they are in the practitioner program, they have to finish like four hour rotation in chiropractic section and acupuncture mm -hmm. section as well. So it's not that they are learning completely about chiropractic mm -hmm. or acupuncture, but they will be able to see how the other portion work. Right, and understand it. Just to have that understanding. Yeah. So we'll be having that component tied into the program as well. Very good. Another thing that can scare people away, I think sometimes, is you go on, you're reading a curriculum summary for any program, any bachelor's, master's, doctorate, certificate, anything, and you see something about learning a language, and you're like, oh no, I have to learn a language, I'm, I'm out of here. Uh, so now one of the things that you do in this program is learn Sanskrit, and there are a lot of reasons why, and I'd love to hear your experience in learning that, and, and why, is, why is it necessary to learn Sanskrit in a program like this? Yeah, learning Sanskrit um, can be a bit challenging, but if you're willing to learn about Ayurveda, Sanskrit is a very important component because um, the science is originally written in Sanskrit and some of the words are not properly translated into English. So in order to understand uh, a Sanskrit word, um, you must know Sanskrit. That way you know exactly um, how do you say it um, that way you want you have a better understanding of the science um, i personally think that sanskrit is beautiful and i actually i was really excited to learn sanskrit and i want to learn it more um, i even found myself um, practicing sanskrit because just the words are how how they're spelled it's just to me it's kind of like an art in itself and um i don't know i i think i love sanskrit. i think 
that need, if that if people have that kind of fear, that needs to be eradicated immediately because Ayurveda is a Sanskrit word. So you already know one word. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. And I think that it's rep it's repetition. The words are used so much, so frequently. The instructors yeah. are going to say it over and over and over again. Um, you pick on it so pick up on it so quickly, and some of the words resemble other words. So you kind of like have this already easier to understand. And so language. when we were creating this curriculum, I know Sanskrit is it takes time to say you want to slam learn. So it's it's a lot of information, and so we do we have very minimal number of hours just for that language class. But throughout the curriculum, first year and second year, students are learning the terminologies and words. So we use a lot of Sanskrit words and we want to make sure students understand that. So we, when we created the curriculum also, we made sure there is a lot of repetition happening. So the same word, you will see that multiple uh, doctors, the mm -hmm. faculty will be repeating it again and again. So by the time students graduate, they get a grip out of it. Right. I don't want to say they will learn complete Sanskrit language. They will know how to talk. No, that right. won't happen through this right. program. But just a basic understanding of this language and how to understand some of the concept explained in Ayurveda. That's that much information they can right. get into and from the program. I think this time last year when we well, when I first started the program, I was like, what are all these words? There's guru and rasa <laughs> and all of these things. But yeah, with the repetition and constantly being drilled in your head, um, now when something said, I'm like, oh, I know what that is, and it's a good feeling, but when the class does start it's very overwhelming because mm -hmm. it's i mean it's a whole new language and to be expected to i think it's to be a little easier on yourself because to expect to learn a whole language and how many hours is the class or a month which one? right that's 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 30 hours, 30 30 hours. hours. um of course you're but it just takes practice and it shouldn't be something that that's why we made sure throughout the program right. that is to take care of. And the words are fun. They're really yeah, they are. Yeah. Some of them even go with Spanish, like Spanish sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And we have great teachers that help us mm -hmm. and are there for us. Yeah. So it's very helpful. Yeah, it makes a big difference, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. That's, that's good. And also, you know, this program, a lot of people tell us that it's very rigorous. It can be very difficult, but on that topic, we're all, we, I think our mindset and, and Dr. New and the other teachers, it's, it's one of helpfulness, being there for you when you have trouble. Our Office of Academic Support and our Learning Resource Center is always there for students. Um, has that been the experience you guys have had through the program? Yeah, um, I think that because all of our instructors, they are doctors from India and they are from India. So, and then being a student here in the United States my whole life, um, I feel like this, this education structure is a little different. I feel like we've had it really easy. We've had study guides and all these things. So it's just understanding their perspective and knowing that they are there to help you, but it's gonna come from their way of learning. And I think that was the most challenging part for me, in my opinion. But every time I had a meet with Dr. Prasad or Dr. New, I was able to get an answer back and help. But I just had to keep that in mind. Like, okay, you guys, I don't, their education is intense. Like, <laughs> so I had to realize that. Um, but they are there for you. And, and you have mentors. Like, and mentors, yeah. I mean, I see Dr. New all the time. And they're more than happy to, to give you their time, which is something so, like, uh, priceless. Yeah. And also student mentor. Yeah, so I did I did the mentorship for the first year students. Um, and then now that I'm graduating, I will be a mentor for the second year, for you guys going into the second year. Um, and I think that's also super beneficial because you get all this knowledge from someone who kind of has already gone through it and you kind of get this like relativeness with them. They can kind of understand you and they can kind of guide you and they know the teachers, they can kind of guide you how to, you know, understand what they're teaching. So I think that it's very supportive and even though it can be challenging you weren't you're if you're gonna go looking for help you're gonna find it no matter what that's great i actually didn't know about the mentorship thing so someone you, you can really relate to mm -hmm. and who's been through it yeah uh, to, to help you versus like a tutor or someone right. of a certain thing that's never done the program before yeah. yes. well very good so well, we are like we are, we are identifying the student for the first year student we are identifying the student from the second year program to help them with either as a tutor mentor mm -hmm. and also we are now creating an alumni support group where for second year students they can get help from students who are already graduated from the program 
so mm -hmm. they can help each other because i always feel faculty can provide some help and all the support but when it's come from the student also it helps them a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also in the clinical setting uh, i believe um, having the second year students like such as amrily i got to work with her and um like Amrily, for example, she made it easier for me to be comfortable in the clinical setting in the very beginning, just because, especially like my first few times that I got to work in the clinic, um, it was a little bit intimidating for me, but seeing the second year students just go about their tasks, like um, like nothing, um, kind of made me feel like, oh, I can do this too. And um, they're even there to like support you, or even if you did something good, they tell you good job. So you're not, completely alone you had, yeah you have a second year students you have your instructors and um even there's um yeah the even classmates. even your class yeah. your classmates as well um mm -hmm. i feel like we kind of work as a team and uh, i mean i remember a few instances in class where um some of our classmates were were wanted to say something but couldn't really say it and I remember like Terry mm -hmm. she'd be like that one person to like say you can do it like say oh, say yeah. what you want to mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. so yeah it's kind of like we kind of push each other to be to be better yeah definitely I know for our first year we have like group chats and we've used yeah. quizlets yeah. and we're yeah we're <laughs> I still always see that. meeting up mm -hmm. we have a Facebook yeah. oh yeah, we have, we have a Facebook <laughs> thing we are very yeah very, like, very I feel like since this is kind of newish, I mean, I know it's been around for a while, um, but newish here and newish to our generation. And I think that we have we have to support each other, you know, as an, we are here to help each other. And even outside of this, I think that the people who have graduated still want to support the people coming into this program. We need to help each other to become a better um, known science mm -hmm. in the United States and in, in our nation and our state alone. So I think that we, there isn't, even after we graduate, where I, ha, I still talk to people who are alumni. Um, and I think even after that, you're gonna have people there no matter what that wanna help you, especially because of the type of program we are. We wanna help and we wanna give back to people and we care. Mm -hmm. so, I see that a lot yeah. with Ayurvedic students. I'm blessed with having yeah. all these students actually when they are in the program and also even after the graduation, they mm -hmm. say that, Dr. Anu, please let me know. Yeah. We are there for any help, any yeah. support. And, to just to hear that, it felt enriching. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's great. It's great to have the alumni network of, yes. of from the program that you're actually in. Yeah. And then also one of the great things about SCU is we have alumni all on every continent across mm -hmm. the uh, across the globe. So having that <laughs> alumni network is really helpful. And it's helpful no matter where you go, wherever yes. you move to, you're likely to be within some kind of proximity to an SCU graduate from many of our many programs. Uh, and often because we have an integrative model it's helpful i think in the career aspect as well mm -hmm. depending on what you're looking to do especially if you want to get into like an integrative clinic right. um, to to know so many people when you graduate who are integrative minded of other professions it just widens the network even further Definitely. so uh, we're a little more than almost well we're almost finished we have about 15 minutes left um, and we've talked a lot about the curriculum and what you learn and the clinical experience we touched a little bit though on the student experience we talked about the the community and the support system that you have how it's kind of like a family um, but maybe we can talk a little bit more what it's like to be a student at SCU so one of the things about this program is it's hybrid so it's online and then there's some portions in the classroom so we've had students from New York come out here to Southern California so you can be as marginally connected as you need to be based on where you are in life and your circumstances but if you want to be really involved, there are so many ways to be involved on campus. And um, looking at the group here, I know you all are very involved. I've had, uh, I know that most of you have done work study uh, before. Um, and I know that there's also a lot of study spaces, the Chesney Center, there's the outdoor area where every, t every class you walk to is outdoors. Um, and a lot of opportunities between the associated student body government, where even Ayurveda students are welcome to be part of that, and the clubs and organizations and associations, over 25 clubs and associations on campus. So of all those many opportunities and the many others, are there any that you've been able to take advantage of and that you have found to be valuable so far? 
Yeah, Ayurvedic health, right? Yoga um, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, for me, I think every Ayurveda student wants to be outside. So we utilize <laughs> that in our beautiful Southern California and that long field. Everyone's either doing yoga or napping or picnicking. Like, no Ayurveda student wants to be outside indoors. So I think that's really beautiful about this campus. It's very small. I've mentioned it's intimate. And for me, this online program is challenging because I'm very hands-on, visual. I need to be in the class. And I was seeing myself becoming really sad about it. So I decided to do something and get more involved, like doing the work study. And, and I feel like that's really brought me to love the school and I feel more a part of it. I'm not isolated because it's easy to get into that uh, being just behind the computer and only seeing your classmates once a month. But yeah, once you become more involved and create relationships, um, the school's really, really intimate. I mean, that's, yeah. The great the way I could say it. Mm -hmm. And I think the Ayurvedic program is, um, or the um, club, is mm -hmm. supposed to help with us being more connected. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that get it bring, connecting us and connecting us to the community. So I think that that is one of the avenues that we have, but also the Chesney Center. Where we, oh, have, mm -hmm. where we have the pool table and the ping pong table. And I think that's cool mm -hmm. because then we get to also see other students of other different um, programs here. And I think that's one of the things that we like to go to and utilize a lot, especially like when we cook our own food and we need to warm it up, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So. But, and to touch on that, yeah. like uh, Ayurveda Club has definitely reached out to outside of our community, something that we did for Valentine's Day, we got roses and we handed them out to the senior homes. And that was just something that not most people would do and take out of their time, like for, yeah. for the day. So to have a club that really encourages that was that was the most rewarding thing to I believe last be year in. before that they went and taught yoga session for mm -hmm. the senior citizen mm -hmm. and the old age home. Mm -hmm. So we would like to involve in those yeah. kind of the club take participation in those kind of activities as well. And I think that says a lot about the whole spirit of Ayurveda is reaching out to the community and um, like sharing the knowledge that some people may not have uh, as far as yoga and I think that yeah, the clubs definitely and we celebrate Diwali. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> Doctor is a great dancer. You can look it up on YouTube. She likes to dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a celebration for us. I mean, we did Diwali too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we went the club time. usually mm -hmm. organized that event. Mm -hmm. The club also promotes um, study groups too. Mm -hmm. um, we can um, we usually try to set a time and place where we can meet, even on campus or at the library where you can study as a group together. Um, I really like the garden here. Um, oh, there's so many beautiful oh, plants. Yeah, the koi fish. Yeah, and then there's, uh, they have fish um, in the pond, <laughs> little mini waterfall, and it's so peaceful. I think the campus itself is, just feels really nice. It feels like, um, it feels very nurturing. Yeah, definitely. That's good. One of the, the things that we connect to mission is we talk about being competent, caring, and integrative. If you read our mission, that's, that is our mission to do those three things and to prepare caring, competent, integrative, and successful practitioners. So the Ayurveda, we've talked about the competencies, the scholastic and the academics and the research. We talked about the integrative piece. And now you bring up another piece, which is the caring and helping other people. Uh, and we do that through uh, the healing arts, but also outside of that. So as you're talking about that, I'm just thinking through some of the many that we have on campus that are available even to the IRB students as well. And anyone can participate. We've, we've had the Being Alive Coalition. They, they uh, work with predominantly HIV positive populations twice per month right now. Uh, we do mission trips. We have one mission trip that goes down to Bolivia twice every year and provides much needed care to underserved populations in an orphanage there. Uh, we have uh, different food distribution uh, for homeless. Uh, we have the Whittier Clinic, we do beach cleanups, uh, we do care packages for veterans, and the list goes on and on and on. So from the classroom to the clinic and beyond, we're doing things in terms of being competent, integrative, and also really caring for yeah. our communities. We also do a lot of community events too. The students and practitioner goes to the community event mm -hmm. and to offer the free consultation mm -hmm. and education for Ayurveda. Yeah. One thing that also was mentioned was the work study program. So if anyone is wondering what that is, that's a, through financial aid if you're eligible and if you apply. Uh, and all four here at some point uh, have done work study. 
And um, oh, yeah, I know as I oversee yeah, Office of Admissions, <laughs> I know that uh, Janine and Nellie both work in Office of Admissions, so actually are able to, a lot of times, counsel income, potentially prospective incoming students on giving them information, answering the phones, and making outbound calls and different things for the students. Uh, so if someone's listening and interested and you call in, there's a chance you may actually talk to some of our existing mm -hmm. students. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities in terms of financial aid and those kinds of things as well. Uh, the whole program is uh, Department of Education uh, funded now, so there's opportunities for financial aid there as well. Um, so a couple other things that came up I wanted to highlight. Um, now, if as we're wrapping up, about 10 minutes left, and you're all current students, if, if you were to be talking to a prospective student, uh, what would you give them as advice? If you're considering the Ayurveda field, and if you're thinking about which school to choose, uh, what would you tell them? I feel like I would say that if, if there's a yearning in you to want to study Ayurveda, then I feel like this is a, the right campus to do it because I know a couple of um, people, including Amberly, that drive from really far just to come to this school. And a lot of people make drastic life changes just to come to the school because mm -hmm. there's something special about the school. And then we have amazing instructors as well. And I feel very grateful to have such knowledgeable people in my life teaching me this, the science. So I feel like if something in you is telling you that you want to learn Ayurveda, it's for a reason and it's, it's your calling and I think you should listen to it. <laughs> Well, so far I've had a really good experience at this school and something that I tell prospective students to call in is if you're, if something's drawing you in, then you call the right place and I just kind of like go over like the first year from what I've experienced and kind of like guide them like there's here, there's some, there's always someone to help you with whatever question that you have. So I would definitely like tell somebody if they want to come to the school, definitely register and like like do it, anyone can do it. I get some calls and um, inquiring like, what what is this school, how does this school differ from the other Ayurveda schools? And my answer to that is because I, is the authenticity because I had asked that same questions. I looked up um, schools all over the country and even outside to India. And I, I always think this is funny, but I got an email saying like, there's a school in Whittier that teaches Ayurveda that has Dr. New and all these, other doctors and you're getting the real McCoy and authenticity here opposed to other schools where they're only teaching little snippets of what Ayurveda is but here you get the authenticity and you get the the clinic with I mean the public is coming to yeah. see help in Ayurveda so I think with those two it makes a huge difference comparing to other schools so it's yeah. It's definitely, I think one of the benefits is that we have actual instructors who did Ayurveda in India and that's what their their life has been. That's mm -hmm. what they chose. That was their life path. It wasn't something they stumbled into. It was something that they were brought up in. And I feel like a lot of other people kind of stumble into it, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like it's not the original, like it's not authentic. It's not coming from, you know, the source. Um, and I feel like that re we really pride ourselves in that. Um, and I think also the clinic, I think we were talking about that recently, that there's not a lot of other programs that allow you to see these patients that maybe only four or a few patients that you'll see and at one time and you don't get this long history with them and get to help them and heal them. I think that's also something that we can pride ourselves in that not a lot of other colleges have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the program was actually recently um, rated number one. Um, the United right. States. Yeah, yeah universities.com rated it uh, number one, us the number one college offering Ayurveda programs. That's very good. So yeah, it feels great to be yeah. part and, of it. And no way am I, <laughs> I'm not one. glorifying Dr. <laughs> New because she's here, but she's definitely, she was just up on the hill and she's in Washington. Like she's really pushing this to become a standard in, in the medical field. So just to have this person who's kind of like steering this whole ship with all of us on it is really yeah. exciting and like we feel Definitely. like we're part of something that's going to add a ripple effect to what the future is and i don't think that there's that many schools where there i'm sure there is but just not that many <laughs> where this lady is a force to be reckoned with right. but it's nice to always have updates on that of what's going on in our congress or what's going on in the science world or 
even with um, NAMA, um, the Association of Ayurveda, like she is also a part of that. And even as a student, we have access to be members of that. And that's the biggest community in Ayurveda. So to know, um, to be a part of that is, is exciting too. Right, we get all that knowledge. Yeah. I don't think there's... Yeah, great. She has so much passion too, and so much that it rubs off on you. <laughs> yeah. And I think that yeah. um, being able to work with her in the clinic as well has made a tremendous right. impact on me. And other students get to um, work with their in other instructors that we have here. So it all again, it creates that intimacy between you and your instructor where you get like that just direct knowledge. You get to build relationships for sure um, from the very beginning. And so speaking to the prospective student who's thinking about it and wondering what the process is going to be. Uh, the first thing is, is an application, which doesn't take long. It's just a, most people finish it within 10 to 15 minutes. But then the very next thing we do is, is have every single student has a personal uh, meeting with Dr. New and talks about the program, talks about what to expect and that kind of thing. So you're building a relationship with Dr. New right there from the very beginning. And we do that on purpose as part of our admissions process. Uh, so now you have the prospective student but we also, the video that we're making right now will be shown to a lot of those who've already been accepted and are definitely planning to begin. And so now what would you give it as advice to those students who are on their way, they're starting up this coming summer or for the next cohort start? Get, get a book about Ayurveda <laughs> and practice so that you're ahead of the game because that's something I wish I did. Even just like a few little things, learn some of the herbs, learn some of that and prepare yourself mentally, spiritually. Yeah. I think being organized, <laughs> being organized from the beginning because it's so mm -hmm. much information. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Being able to go back and know where all that information mm -hmm. is when you need it. If um, you're organized, that's like half yeah, the battle because exactly. then like that takes the most time. So yeah, if you keep your Definitely. Um, and being open to having this community that is willing to help you and support you. I think that's one of the things you know that people will be here for you. So what I would like to say is if they have taken a decision to join a CU Ayurveda program, they are on the right place, the right time, and we all are there for you to support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are not left alone. So okay. we are there. That's very good. Now, do we have about three minutes left? Um, all of you are either going into the second year or are finishing the second year and planning to go forth from SCU to do other things. So upon graduation, you, if you do the second year, you now will have two certificates, a wellness educator and a practitioner certificate. Uh, maybe some of you are just doing the wellness educator, but regardless of whatever level you determine you're going to do, what are some of the things you're looking to do? There's so many kind of career options and things like that. And we do have the career ebook on uh, seuhs.edu slash Ayurveda. So if anyone's listening and you want to read that book, it gives a nice comprehensive outline of many of the different uh, kind of settings you can do and the kind of work you can do also with each of the different levels. Uh, but I'd love to hear directly from you guys, are, are there certain fields you're interested in going into? Um, well, I'm going back to get more education. I'm, I want to go and study medical anthropology to kind of supplement and then hopefully become a doctor. Um, but I think that I, right now with the, uh, the amount of education that I have and the people that are around me, I could have my own practice if I wanted to. The amount of people that come to me and ask me questions about it um, are not small. So to develop that, I think I could do that, but I prefer to have more education from other different sciences mm -hmm. to supplement what I'm doing. And I'll say something on that. There are a lot of students who do that. Yeah. who will begin, this is the first kind of healing practice they learn, but then we'll go on to add on other kinds of practices mm -hmm. along with it, or vice versa. They may be a chiropractor, acupuncturist, yeah. medical mm -hmm. doctor, and then they'll go on to go ahead and add this to their current practice. Right. Well. Our class is diverse, actually. Yeah. From high school diploma, we have chiropractors, mm -hmm. acupuncturists, MD doctors come with yeah. like all walk of their life. Yeah. And actually I'll pause to say for acupuncture, I think it is, and for doctors of chiropractic, there's a portion of this that they actually can get continuing education credit as well. Yes. So depending on if, when you're watching this video, if you're watching it in 10 years to come, make sure you check with us on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of it's pre-approved for most states and um, is, is approved in California for a lot of your hours too. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you guys are planning to do? I think they all are continuing with the second year. Yes, yeah. the second year. Yeah. I think for me, um, Ayurveda is amazing because there's so many different channels you could go through, avenues. There's You could take it as far as you want to go. 
And uh, for me, I think I want to plant the seeds in children because of mm -hmm. the fact that diabetes is rising, anxiety is rising. I feel like they're the ones that we need to like, like I said, plant the seed into them and and share that knowledge because they are really going to be the ones passing it on. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want to work with children. But the nice thing is if if I ever do change my mind, I could become a practitioner. Like I could open up my own practice. It's really having the formula of wanting to be, um, you have to market yourself and you also have to have that knowledge, but it's, there's so many jobs and career opportunities. It's just making it for yourself, making it, creating it. In the last batch, um, last people that graduated, we, um, there was someone who opened her own yoga studio and then had other practitioners join her at the yoga studio. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really up to what you guys can create. And that's why it's important to um, keep those connections right, exactly. with your classmates because who knows, you know, in the future, you might be opening up your own practice with right. your exactly. friends. And um, I mean, for me, I would like to continue my education in Ayurveda. Um, but I do see myself working in a clinical setting and then also um, possibly opening up my own practice in the future. Very good. Well, that's all the time we have. I want to say a sincere thank you to each of you for taking your time to do this. And thank you, Dr. Anu, as well, sure. for, for your time and helping us to, to organize. I think this has been really wonderful and a great gift to anyone who's considering Ayurveda in the future. I would tell those who are watching this on YouTube, um, there are a few things that we would tell you. If you have any interest in Ayurveda at all, uh, we encourage you to contact us. You can just email admissions at scuhs.edu and we will respond to you right away and, and answer any questions you have. Another thing you could do if you have a different, uh, another level of interest is if you go to scuhs.edu slash Ayurveda, you can read all about the programs, the wellness educator, the practitioner, and then there's a form on the top right where you can enter your first name, last name, uh, email address, and phone number, and we'll contact you right away and get you all the information you need. If you really are considering the program, uh, we do literally get thousands of inquiries every year with only a limited amount of space. For this year, actually, we already have stopped the applications coming in and are on a waiting list. So we'd really encourage you to go ahead and apply uh, for the program. You can do that at scuhs.edu slash apply to find the application. Also on scuhs.edu slash Ayurveda, that's where the free ebook is. So if you wanna learn about careers in Ayurveda, that'd be a great resource for you. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SCUHS, there are at least two other videos about Ayurveda. One that uh, was with Dr. New, where she talks a little bit more about it. And another that's just an overview of the program that's a short video. So those are more resources for you. Uh, thanks again for joining us. And we look forward to having you join us for the next Thank webinar. You. Thank you. Thank you.